Give a shout out right now for noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestment.com. So is investing in silver today a good idea? Well, Colin Plume from our friends at noblegoldinvestment.com, they think so. Our, on the national desk, he explained there have been huge sell-offs of silver because of the low price right now. Silver is the most useful industrial metal out there and demand for it is soaring for electronics and electric cars and solar panel circuits and on and on and on. The Green New Deal is increasing the need for silver. As industries pick up after the pandemic supply chain issues, the trend now should reverse quickly and silver's prices should skyrocket. So don't miss this. Give the team at noblegoldinvestment.com a call. And that number is 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. If you set up a silver or gold IRA, $20,000 20, or more, they will send you this stunning three ounces of pure silver American virtue coin. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous collector's item. It's three ounces of pure silver. It can be yours for free if you set up and you do need to look at your 401k or your IRA, your rollover. You need to diversify. You know you do. The stock market oh, is, you're, most of you, your 401k in the last year has lost 30% of its value. Some of you worse than that. It's time for you to get in control of your own destiny. Put some of your money into silver. And when the price of silver goes up, instead of losing money, you'll, you'll be gaining and, and protecting your value. That's noblegoldinvestment.com. Right. Leaked documents reveal the DHS collaborated with Facebook to target disinformation. Facebook has created a designated portal through which the Department of Homeland Security can directly report claims of, quote, disinformation to the company, despite shuttering its widely unpopular Disinformation Governance Board in early 2022 the DHS has continued its underlying plans, documents obtained by the Intercept, Intercept excuse me, revealed. Among the topics in which the DHS has prioritized to target include, quote, the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic and the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines, racial justice, U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, and the nature of U.S. support to Ukraine, Ken Klippenstein and Lee Fang reported in The Intercept. The investigation relied heavily on leaked memos, emails, and documents, as well as public documents stemming from an ongoing lawsuit. It shows that despite the Department of Homeland Security's initial backtracking of the Disinformation Council, it remains actively involved in lobbying tech companies over misinformation and disinformation. The investigation focuses on a subgroup within the Department of Homeland Security known as Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Along with the FBI, they met regularly with social media entities as recently as August. Notes show that during these meetings, platforms such as Twitter were requested to, quote, process reports and provide timely responses to include the removal of reported misinformation from the platform where possible. One of The Intercept's biggest findings was that the FBI agent, who played an instrumental role in pushing social media company to censor the infamous New York Post story about Hunter Biden's laptop, continued to shape DHS policy discussions. The DHS Facebook portal remains active even and the government agency Meta, Facebook's parent company, and the FBI have yet to comment on the matter. Child deaths from acute kidney injury rises to 133 in Indonesia. Indonesia's health minister said on Friday that the number of children who died from acute kidney injury rose to 133 from the previously reported 99. The deaths were among a total of 241 cases in 22 different provinces, the health minister said, adding that most patients were children under the age of 5. The health minister on Thursday said some medicinal syrups available in Indonesia contained ethylene glycol, which is an ingredient that has been linked to fatal acute kidney injury in children. 
Indonesia has temporarily banned sales and prescription of all syrup-based medications and formed an expert team comprised of local health and pediatrician officials and World Health Organization representatives to look into the acute kidney injury spike among children. The country's food and drug agency has also named five locally made products which contained excessive levels of ethylene glycol and has ordered the producers to pull them out of circulation and destroy all remaining batches. A former heavyweight boxer was charged with trafficking 22 tons of cocaine worth $1 billion through U.S. ports. A former heavyweight boxer from Montenegro was charged by the United States Department of Justice on Monday with trafficking in 22 tons of cocaine worth over $1 billion, most of which was part of the largest cocaine seizure in American history. Goran Gorgic, 43, was arrested on Sunday night while trying to board a flight to Zurich from Miami International Airport after being indicted by a grand jury in New York. Prosecutors charged Gorgic with three counts of violating the Federal Maritime Drug Law Enforcement Act and one count of conspiracy. Each count carries a mandatory minimum 10-year prison term and a possible life sentence. Gorgic was detained after a brief appearance before U.S. Magistrate Judge Lizette Reed in Miami, his lawyer said. Another detention hearing is scheduled for November the 7th. The charges stem from seizures of 22 tons of cocaine from three different commercial cargo ships in 2019, including 19.8 tons of cocaine from a cargo ship while it was docked at Philadelphia's Packer Avenue Marine Terminal. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, the world's most powerful rocket, launches after three-year hiatus. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, a towering three-pronged vehicle that is the most powerful operational rocket in the world, returned to the skies on Tuesday for the first time since mid-2019. The rocket launched at around 9.41 a.m. Eastern Time from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, hauling satellites for space for the U.S. military in a secretive mission dubbed USSF-44. The Falcon Heavy debuted in 2018 to much fanfare as SpaceX CEO Elon Musk elected to launch his personal Tesla Roadster as a test payload on the launch. The car is still in space, taking an oblong path around the sun that swings out as far as Mars's orbital path. Bitcoin and Ethereum press higher as momentum increases. Bitcoin's price was up about 0.3% over the past 24 hours, the latest surge in an upbeat week that saw the largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization climb about 8% in value. The spike came amid new hopes that the U.S. Federal Reserve would be able to scale back its monetary hawkishness sometime early next year and a few mildly encouraging economic indicators. Ethereum's price recently increased 0.6% from Thursday's same time and was up approximately 19% over the past week.